as I often say, you're trading traders, not markets. And you're dealing with a bunch of emotional beings. And that's what makes a market. And guess what? One of them is you. As I preach over and over, being cognizant of your own feelings and trading and in life in general will help you to wrap your head around the emotional nature of the market. This morning, like an idiot, I went in the house right before the open and my wife hit me with a bunch of financial stuff. And I'm like, okay, so I come in and am I of the right mindset? So I go to put on trades and I found, I found myself a little hesitant, like on the intraday stuff, playing the open and gap reversal to the upside this morning. And then once I put them on, I found myself a little hesitant thinking that, well, wait a minute, I don't want to lose any money today, right? And as Douglas was, was saying a while back, sometimes what you're focusing on is what you manifest. So you don't lose money, don't lose money. Before you know it, you're losing money because maybe you need to give that position some wiggle room, okay? And you just can't stomach the wiggle room. Whereas before I was ready to come in today, and risk whatever it took. And then all of a sudden my mojo is a little off and I had to be really, really careful. Am I being prudent? Am I reading the emotions of the market or am I letting my own emotions take charge? In addition to that, just to kind of let it insult to injury, for whatever reasons, I haven't been to the dentist in six years. Luckily, six years ago, he told me what to do to take care of my teeth and I just never got around to going. And then COVID struck four years later, and, and then there goes another two years or whatever. So it's six years total. But everything's fine. I'm good. But I was nervous about going to the dentist and knowing know that it was going to be a painful experience and turned out to be fine other than a couple hours in a chair and very uncomfortable. But I had that to deal with that, and I was thinking about putting on positions and going to the dentist's office and all this other good stuff. So there's a lot going on in my head today which could have affected my trading, at least on that stuff that I've done in more recent times, the intraday stuff, as opposed to longer-term trend following. The longer-term trend following, which starts off as a swing trade, as you know, is not a whole lot to do there other than follow the system. I know, easier said than done. But be cognizant of your own emotions. And in my trading journal, I write down all these emotions. I write down all my... All my uh, all my F-bombs <laughs> and what I'm thinking and what I'm going through. And and one thing I'm guilty of not doing, I'm really good at documenting everything. I'm guilty of not going back in and reading the notes and, and learning from them, but I'm, I'm getting better on that. And basically, by the way, if you've been trading for 20 or 30 years, you you get better. <laughs> You get, you're always getting better. You're always, you're still gonna make mistakes, but you feel like I'm getting better, okay? So I'm gonna get better at going back and looking at those notes. So as Tom McClellan said at the AAPTA meeting a few years back, when you buy a stock, you're forming a relationship between you and the company, but you're also forming a relationship between you and everyone who's bought it prior to you. And he wanted to say that those people will screw you. And it kind of, I'm using that kind of beating a dead horse in the dovetail tonight, but it does dovetail nicely into what Mark Douglas said is all it takes is one a-hole to screw up a perfectly good trade. Somebody at a trading desk fat fingers something, or there might be a institution trying to sell at a certain level or buy at a certain level. And one of one way I was blessed is is by accident I was able to hook up with a bunch of I guess I can't use that word anymore. <laughs> the young kids say it, it tells it means something different nowadays, but I was able to become friendly with a lot of old timers who've been around for a long, long time in the markets. And one person once said that prices don't move, prices are moved, okay? And I guess our job is to figure out what they're likely to do next based on how they're being moved. But all it takes is one a-hole to screw up a perfectly good trade. Now, I'm a small trader and I can't move the market. 
But for SG, sometimes I'll put a crazy ask out there. I'm long an option. I'll put a crazy ask out there to see if somebody will take the bait. Okay. Or maybe somebody's in a pinch and they need it to cover or whatever, and they're forced to buy it. And, and my little being stupid could actually trigger a chain reaction. It's not likely, but it could happen. And the reason I bring up options is that the what's fun with options is I actually go in, like if I'm trying to buy some options, and it's small orders, nothing really major, whatever. But a lot of times I'm trying to get between the bid and the ask, and I and I watched I, I put my order in and I watch the ask change to the order. Well, that's me. Okay, that's me in the markets. So that could be somebody else doing that or somebody much bigger than me. <laughs> Dollar wise, not size wise. I can't imagine too many people bigger than me, size wise. I'm sure there's a few. <laughs> there's, there's a guy about, he's about a biscuit shy of 500. <laughs> so I tell my wife, he's my canary in the coal mine. When he goes, I better start watching it. <laughs> anyway, I thought that. The trend knockout, not to teach you the pattern tonight, because I've done complete presentations just on this, but I do want to give you the rules just in case you want to do a screenshot of this. But I'd recommend you go in and watch the complete presentations where just focused on on the TKO. But I woke up this morning thinking, how can I explain some of these concepts about reading the emotions of the market while embracing your own? And one one thing that I love is reading these i can't reach any because they're all behind the curtain the curtains it's a mighty python all this will be yours the curtains that'll make sense to one of you but what i love reading these old books on technical analysis and training psychology like i'm talking at least 100 years old or maybe 80 or 90 years old whatever because they kind of walk you through what happens in a bull cycle and a bear cycle from a psych perspective and the next time I find myself digging one of these off the shelf that has a really good explanation of some of these things I'll uh, make a note of the of the book but anyway I think that in terms of explaining the trend knockout I could explain the psychology behind it why it's conceptually correct and what is likely happening okay so first thing we start with is a strong trend and if a market is in a strong trend there's demand and people may be waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for a pullback and it might seem like it'll never happen and then they just throw in a towel and buy at any price well we're not going to jump in midstream although sometimes you'd be better off jumping in midstream on the upside than trying to jump in midstream and catch that falling knife. But usually you wanna wait for some sort of setup as opposed to just buying a market because it's going up, okay? Well, what we're looking for is some players that get sucked in and some players that get spit out in a pattern. So, there's a psychology behind a pattern. Now, there's some mumbo jumbo out there when it comes to technical analysis. I would never throw anyone under the bus, but I have someone that I really, really respect. And he's pointed out that he's never met a rich person who uses this arcane methodology. And I tend to agree. I may have met a rich person, but I know, but they soon they blew up soon thereafter. Anyway, I'm gonna get in trouble here if I spend too much time on that. Now, those late to game tend to be the most fickle traders and let's just call them the Johnny come lately. So you've got a strong trend and a Johnny come lately comes in and they buy at any price. They're really bad traders, they're fickle traders. They just, they just give up and throw in the towel, okay? You've ever seen, have you ever seen the stock market make new highs and then back off and chop around forever or whatever, and then goes to make new highs again. There's a push higher and all of a sudden the market comes back in and that turns out to be the ultimate top, like a double top or something. Well, that's because the people who missed it last time are, are piling in this time because they don't want to miss it. What happens is the Johnny come latelys usually 
through emotional staying power or because they're trading on a shoestring, don't have a lot of margin, the trend knockout tends to knock them out of the market. These are these are the bad traders in the market that can that can muck up your position. So when you get that sharp sell off, the trend knockout, it knocks them out of the trend, hence the name, right? And if the market begins to rally, especially if it goes on to make new highs after it triggers, then they might be inclined to jump back into the market. Okay, so it kind of spits them out and then it can suck them right back in. Now, short, I almost said sharks. <laughs> the sharks smell of blood and pounce as the market begins to drop. One thing I didn't realize, I've always, I'm always, I've always thought shorts have a bigger ego than the long side people, the, the very active shorts, especially the people who just would rather short than go long. And it wasn't until I was speaking in Vegas a few years back that I learned there was actually a methodology where it's called shorting the parabolics. The market's going straight up and the shorts just pile on trying to catch that top. So that kind of confirmed what I thought is that the shorts are a bit egotistical. Sometimes they confuse the issue with facts and they put some kind of valuation on a stock, technical or otherwise. So if the shorts sell the market at new highs and the market begins to sell off, they're just the opposite of the Johnny come lately. They're feeling pretty damn good because they're instantly validated, right? If the market begins to rally though, then they become upset, obviously, because the market's doing the opposite of what they thought. Now, here's one thing I was thinking about earlier is their methodology or one of their methodologies is selling things that are high and if the market sells off and they don't take profits and it starts going up again then they're they're trained to sell things that are go hot that are going higher so it's going to be hard for them to let go it's going to be hard for them to buy to cover when at that point in time their methodology is saying this thing is high you should be shorting it and if it does begin to go a little parabolic doing that coming out of that TKO, which happens not as often as I wish, but every now and then it will happen. What will eventually happen is the shorts will be forced to cover at the absolute worst time, and that could push that market even higher. <laughs> the conference is <laughs> uh, on day one was uh, other people speaking, and day two I spoke, and. Uh, I learned about the shorting the parabolics and I, I had this little Mark Douglas slide, all it takes is one A to screw up a perfectly good trade. I'm like, <laughs> nice to meet you. You know, now that I know who's who's in here uh, at these parabolic moves where I'm trend following and they're piling in.